हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई से अकेडमी इन दिस लेक्चर लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड एल सी ऑसिलेटर्स वी नो द ऑसिलेटर्स विल बी हैविंग द एम्पलीफायर सर्क्यूट एज वेल एज टैंक सर्क्यूट इन द टैंक सर्क्यूट if the oscillator consists of inductor as well as capacitor such type of oscillators are known as lc oscillators so in a tank circuit if the oscillator consists of inductor and capacitor such type of oscillators are known as lc oscillators there are two types of lc oscillators first one is hartle oscillator and second one is colpitts oscillator before going to oscillator let us understand the working of lc tank circuit here you need to remember the inductor will store energy in magnetic field and capacitor will store energy in electrostatic field so the inductor will store the energy in the form of magnetic field and the capacitor will store the energy in the form of electrostatic field now let us consider the combination of capacitor and inductor connected in parallel as shown in this figure if we connect a capacitor and inductor in a tank circuit as shown in this figure such type of circuit is known as resonant circuit or tank circuit or it is also known as lc circuit now let us understand the operation of this tank circuit when input is received by the capacitor the capacitor will fully charge once the capacitor is fully charged it starts discharging and inductor starts charging so once the capacitor is fully charged the capacitor will starts discharging and inductor will starts charging so this can be shown in the waveform so initially the capacitor starts charging once the capacitor is fully charged the capacitor will starts discharging this is first step here the inductor creates the magnetic field and the energy in the inductor increases and the energy across the capacitor will decrease in the second step the inductor will produce back emf and starts discharging and the capacitor will starts charging so in the second step the inductor will produce back emf and the polarity across the inductor will change so initially the polarity is positive and negative now the polarity will change to negative and positive and this inductor will start discharging and capacitor will start charging so this can be shown in the waveform since capacitor is charging and the polarity across the capacitor has changed that's why the capacitor will charge in the opposite direction this is step number 2 in the third step once the capacitor is fully charged again the capacitor will start discharging and the inductor will start charging so in the third step capacitor discharges in opposite direction since the polarity has changed and inductor starts charging so this can be shown in the waveform where the capacitor is starts discharging so this is step number 3 now this process continues again once the inductor is fully charged the inductor will produce back emf and starts discharging in the opposite direction and capacitor will start charging so this process will continue and will obtain a sinusoidal waveform as shown in this figure so this is how the tank circuit will operate now let us understand the hartle oscillator using bjt as i told you the oscillator consists of amplifier circuit as well as the tank circuit the difference between hartle and colpitt oscillator is that in the tank circuit the hartle oscillator consists of one capacitor and two inductor which are connected in parallel as shown in this figure so we can name this capacitor as c inductor as l1 and l2 in colpitt oscillator 
in the tank circuit we will be having two capacitor and one inductor so this is the only difference the working of circuit will be same so here the amplifier circuit will amplify the signal and the tank circuit will produce the required oscillations as we have discussed so initially the thermal noise is taken as input to the amplifier circuit that is amplified and fed back to the lc tank circuit to produce the required oscillations here the frequency of oscillation of hartley oscillator can be given as f is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi root lc since we are using two inductors we need to find the equivalent inductor and we can write the formula as f is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi square root of l equivalence into c here l equivalence will be equal to l1 plus l2 or we can write L equivalence is equal to L1 plus L2 plus 2M. Here M is mutual inductance. So here, while solving the problem, if they give mutual inductance, you need to take L equivalence as this formula. And if the mutual inductance is not given in the problem, at that case, you need to use this formula. So let us assume the mutual inductance is not given. At that case, the frequency of oscillation f will be equal to 1 divided by 2 pi square root of L1 plus L2 into C. So this is the frequency of oscillation. Now let us find the gain. The gain of Hartley oscillator can be given as gain should be always greater than L1 plus M divided by L2 plus M. So again, if mutual inductance is not given, which means if M is equal to 0, at that case we can take gain should be greater than L1 divided by L2. So this is the formula for gain. Next is phase shift. Here the amplifier will produce 180 degree phase shift and the feedback stage or the tank circuit will produce 180 degree phase shift. So overall phase shift will be 180 degree plus 180 degree. It will be 360 degree or 0 degree. So the amplifier will produce 180 degree phase shift and the feedback network or tank circuit will produce 180 degree phase shift. So overall phase shift will be 360 degree or 0 degree. This is the working of Hartley oscillator. Now let us understand Colpitt's oscillator using BJT. The Colpitt oscillator is similar to the Hartley oscillator. Only difference is in the LC tank circuit, it will be having two capacitors and one inductor. The working of Colpitt oscillator is same as the Hartley oscillator. Now let us find the frequency of oscillation. The frequency of oscillation can be given as F is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi square root of LC. Since we are having two capacitors, we can find the equivalence capacitor here. And we can write F is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi square root of L into C equivalence. So this is the frequency of oscillation. Here C equivalence will be equal to C1 C2 divided by C1 plus C2. Now let us find the gain. The gain of culprit oscillator a should be greater than C2 divided by C1. Here always gain is represented in the form of HFE. HFE is nothing but beta. 
beta is the current gain. Therefore, the gain of culprit oscillator beta should be always greater than C2 divided by C1. So here gain is represented in the form of beta which is current gain. In the same way for Hartley oscillator, the gain can be represented in the form of current gain. So we can write beta should be greater than L1 divided by L2. You need to remember this for Hartley oscillator. Now let us see the phase shift. So here the amplifier circuit will produce 180 degree phase shift and the feedback circuit or tank circuit will produce 180 degree phase shift. So amplifier circuit will produce 180 degree phase shift and feedback circuit will produce 180 degree phase shift. So overall phase shift will be 360 degree or 0 degree. So this is the working of Colpitt's oscillator. This is about LC oscillators. Hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.